Okay, so we're having a conversation about what people believe and why they believe it. Now, it's important when I'm talking to the atheists, if you're an atheist out there, there's two distinguishing, a distinguish between two types of belief in God. The first time before I became a Christian, I read a lot of books um, that were vaguely related to religion. And I became very, very intellectually convinced that there was a God. That's a totally different thing than my faith as a Christian. Those are two separate entities, two separate, two separate experiences. Now, in the intellect, being intellectually convinced that there was a God, one of the people who I read was William James, The Variety of, of Religious Experience. So, I'm going to read a little article from The Guardian, a little bit from an article in The Guardian about William James. Conversion matters to James for reasons other than it is a common religious experience. He recognized that the strongest evidence for the existence of God is found in such personal inner experience. This is not to say that there is no publicly available data that can be studied and discussed. The testimonies he assembles in the varieties do just that. Rather, he's suggesting that in studying religious experience, it's important to bear in mind that belief in the reality of God is more like belief in the genius of Shakespeare than belief in the veracity of string theory. This means it will always be contested, though to reduce extraneous argument and focus on the evidence that is most likely to be illuminating, James examines what he ta takes to be the most valuable material, the best articulated and most profound records of conversion. For him, to do otherwise would be like declaring you were going to study music by excluding the words of Bach in favor of nursery rhymes. But James has a point. If religion is more like the appreciation of Shakespeare, then there are going to be individuals who have a better eye for the divine and whom it is therefore more valuable to study. Okay, that's very important. Now they go into the idea of whether in fact it can be a delusion, a religious experience. But I maintain when I talk about my own particular religious experience, there is something that I am perceiving, a reality I am perceiving, that if you are an atheist, you don't. But I maintain that it is a reality I am perceiving. And you are not perceiving it. Now, if you want to explore it with an open mind, which would be in your best interests, Oftentimes, you know, the atheist will tell you he has an open mind. Do you? You sure? Some do. So many don't. Many, many of you have already come to a firmly rooted conclusion that there isn't a God. Now, if you start, it, start with an open mind on the subject, if, you, if, you, if you're asking the question from the point of view of there isn't, you have already come to a conclusion. Your mind is not open on the subject. I have come to, to come to the question from the point of view of there is, but that was after years and years and years. I didn't start out there. Started out in my 20s, you know, reading atheist stuff. I was, a, I was in a punk rock band, and I read Nietzsche, and thought I was cool, you know, and I was, I was if atheism were true, uh, you're not going to accept this, but whatever, I'll just say it. If atheism were true, I would have bought it then, because I was, I was, I was, ready to, I was ready to roll with it. You know, I was reading Camus, I was reading um, Nietzsche, uh, plays like Waiting for Godot, and I was asking myself, and I was exploring the question from the point of view of there probably isn't. Keep in mind, if you are exploring the question from the point of view of there probably isn't a God, you're, that is going to color your explanation, your exploration. That is going to change the way you search. If you want to search honestly, you have to start at maybe. If you're not starting at maybe, it's not a real search. It's not actually empirical. It's not actually scientific. It's not actually rooted in truth. It's rooting in a precept. Yeah, just as I have a precept, you can have a precept. And if you're going to actually explore the question honestly, you've got to start at maybe. Start with William James, the variety of religious experience. Then go to Joseph Campbell, The Power of Myth. I'm just telling you books that intellectually convinced me that there was a God. It might be different for you. Then I read the Tao Te Ching. 
Then I read, uh, what was it? What was another one? Then you look into Young. Check out Jordan Peterson's lectures on the Old Testament. There are plenty of better rational intellectual explanations or rational intellectual explorations of the possibility of the existence of God. There are plenty of much better, much deeper, much more cogent ones than the ones that, that are thrown out by we the apologists. And in that I include myself. In, in, in the atheist Christian debates as they're framed, you know, they're framed in service of... They're not necessarily framed in service of the ultimate truth. They're not necessarily framed in service of finding out the absolute truth as to who is right and who is wrong. So I'm trying to tell you there's a different way to approach the question where you, can, where you can start asking the question, exploring the question in a way that is a lot more intellectually honest. Now that's a very different thing than what I'm talking about when I talk about you know relating my experiences with the Holy Spirit of God. That is not something that you can explore in a book. That is not something that you can intellectually find out. That is something that God himself would have to reveal to your heart. Now that's a very different type of experience. But start with the intellectual. But start with the intellectual from the point of view of maybe. Because if you don't, your precept is guiding where, where you go. And yes, I have a precept. But I didn't arrive here. I, I didn't get my precept. I didn't get my my quote-unquote knowledge that God is real until I was 30 years old. Spent a long time reading a lot of books on the subject prior to being 30 years old. And I was intellectually convinced that there was a God when I was 26, 27, 28, and 29. So that's all I'll say for now on that.